we have been hearing since last couple of weeks that uh, now Muslims are being uh, affected by this coronavirus and they are being martyred. And subhanAllah, may Allah make it easy on them and their family. Uh, but the problem arising is the governments, especially the non-Muslim governments, those Muslims living under the non-Muslim governments, they are being forced to cremate the body instead of traditional burial. And they are and they're giving their reasons that uh, the virus is going to spread and all the stuff. But Islamically, can we cremate a Muslim body rather than burying? I think um, it's a very uh, tough time that we are all going through, um, uh, especially as you have mentioned that some of the Muslims are now being affected and uh, are uh, even uh, dying because of uh, the infection from the coronavirus. Um, so it is uh, really a dire situation and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannah. Amen, um, amen. We say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun for uh, uh, the, the hardship that uh, the families and everybody is going through. We have all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we return back. We belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, it is a difficult situation. So now the, the, the issue that uh, we are facing is um, while Muslims are dying because of the contagion, because of the um, infection uh, of the virus, um, some countries, obviously not all, um, some countries, um, I probably may not want to take the names uh, just to um, reduce the pressure on the communities there, uh, but there are some uh, non-Muslim countries where um, the governments have decided uh, to go ahead w with what you call the cremation of the bodies, uh, irrespective of the, um, the rights of the deceased. So some countries have decided to go ahead with this. Now, what do we do as Muslims in this situation? Now, first of all, it is important to see what is the, um, the foundation uh, in regards to the burial from a Muslim perspective, from an Islamic perspective. The Muslim has a right on the other Muslims. And one of those rights are that if one of you passes away, one of you dies, then the remaining Muslims, the Muslims in the surrounding, in the vicinity, they give the, they, they bathe the body, um, they uh, uh, shroud the body, and what they do is they pray the janaza, that is the prayer for the deceased, and they do the Islamic burial. So uh, these are minimum requirements or the uh, important requirements for any Muslim who passes away. Now, in situations, there are exemptions such as when a person uh, is killed or murdered for being Muslim, uh, either in a battlefield or, or elsewhere for being a Muslim. So when we title the person as a Shaheed, um, through qital, through uh, murder or through killing, uh, he has been murdered uh, for being Muslim, so then that person falls into the category of a Shaheed. So that person is not given the bait, is not um, given the, uh, the shower, and he is uh, led directly to the burial. So that is one exemption, um, uh, rather it is a matter of what you call um, higher position and honor and dignity for the, the person who has died for the Shaheed. Now coming to the basic issue, the important issue is cremation. Now is cremation permissible in Islam? Now um, the straight answer to that is cremation is not permissible in Islam. It is incorrect, it is wrong, um, you can even call it that it is blasphemous to the deceased. Um, rather, I would call it, uh, from a human perspective, burning the body, uh, not, not just from an Islamic perspective. You take all the major religions of the world, Islam, Christianity, Judaism. We, we, most of the major religions of the world do not have cremation of the body. It is taken very severely that they do not cremate the body. Rather, they um, um, wash the body, uh, shroud the body, and uh, do the burial uh, uh, in the land. Now, why do we do it in, uh, on, in the earth? Why do we bury in the earth? Now, there are um, medical reasons for that, scientific reasons for that, and religious reasons for that, obviously. One of the reasons, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran in regards to the burial of a person is as mentioned in Surah Taha, Surah number 20, Ayah number 55, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Minha khalaqnakum, wa fiha nu'idukum, wa minha nukhrijukum, taratan, uh, 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 taratan ukhra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from it, from the soil, from the dust, from the earth, we created you and we shall send you back into it and we shall resurrect you from it the second time. So this ayah clearly speaks about that the people, we have been created from soil and we will die and shall be buried in the soil and we shall be resurrected from the soil. This is one of the reasons, interestingly, you see when a Muslim burial is done, there is a space left within the grave above the, the, the deceased. So it's, a, it's an oxygen space that is left. Why? From a medical perspective, from a scientific perspective, you, you see that it allows the decomposition of the body. So the body which is made up of soil is now allowed to decompose back into the soil, fulfilling this ayah of the Quran. And also this is a very appropriate uh, thing to do from a scientific perspective.
Now, if somebody is denying all of this, then we say that this is incorrect. Any government which is uh, imposing a law, the reason they are doing it right now, because of COVID-19, of coronavirus, what, the, what some of the medical um, uh, experts are saying, and that is why some of the governments are following this rule, is they are being overcautious, they are being concerned that the dead body may still be contagious. Now, there is no, um, what do you call, uh, proof as of now through medical science that the dead body is contagious. And even if it is contagious, how contagious is it? It needs to be what you call very severely contagious that you should say that there is a high possibility that it may pass on the infection, the virus, to the people who are around the dead body. Now, from what we know right now is there can be easy precautions taken with the deceased body. Um, you bathe the body, um, you shroud the body, you have what you call uh, a non-infectious um, body bags. You can place the body after the, um, the bath in the body bag and maybe more than one body bag, two, two or three um, covers. And with all the conditions being fulfilled, all the medical conditions being fulfilled under the super supervision of the experts, legal as well the medical, and you have the prayer of the, for the deceased and then you have the burial in the, in the land. All of this can be very easily organized, which is being organized all the way from United States to our country here in Australia as well. So this is being organized to a large extent. Most of the conditions are being fulfilled for both Muslims, Jews and Christians. So this is all being fulfilled. So I believe that although we are not medical experts, there are varying opinions amongst the, the medical experts in this subject. But the majority from what we have heard, uh, which is actually being implemented across the globe, and there is no proof yet that uh, from the dead body, the disease or the virus is being um, infectious to the to the living. Uh, there's no yet um, proof for that. Uh, but having said that, if it is, then these precautions can be taken because cremation is not permissible from a dignity perspective, from a respectable um, approach towards the um, the deceased, the person. Uh, we strongly urge, recommend uh, Muslim societies to work with the other organizations like the Christian and Jewish societies and lobby and put pressure on the government, speak to them, communicate with them, urge them to allow the, um, the burial of the Muslims, Jews and Christians who uh, have this religious uh, uh, responsibility to do it and avoid the cremation to the best of your ability. So just to, fo just to follow up on that one, what are the laws in Australia for Muslims? Sure. Uh, what currently uh, we have understood so far, and it's a devil evolving issue. So this issue is evolving, and day by day there are different scenarios that are coming up. And the scholarly bodies, the National Imams Council, the Islamic Council of Victoria, the uh, Board of Imams, there are different bodies in Australia of the scholars who are going to be taking um, uh, measures accordingly and are going to be communicating with the concerned bodies and make a judgment and make a decision accordingly. So far what we have understood or what we have seen is uh, the body is um, uh, allowed to be bathed, the body is allowed to be shrouded, is allowed to have a janaza, uh, the prayer for the deceased, but the numbers are restricted. In different okay. states, there are different restrictions. You cannot have a hundred people gathering. Rather, you need to have a small gathering in some places 10, in some places 5. Um, and uh, based on that, then you have the social distancing rule to be followed. Uh, no handshakes and no um, uh, huggings uh, as such. Um, and the burial can be taken place. Now, in some places, they have also put the restriction that the body cannot be bathed because the possibility of the infection to um, um, go further to the person who is giving the uh, uh, shower or the bathing is possible. So in such scenarios, if there is a legal law, if there is a law that has been already imposed, then depending on the medical advice that is there, um, and because we are now helpless in such a situation as a community, uh, the law of the land needs to be followed at the end of the day. Um, so we need to follow that. So if there are places where there is a condition that the body cannot be bathed, because of the possibility of the contagion, then we're not saying it's permissible to uh, go ahead with that, but we're saying we do not have a choice except to go ahead with that. So in such circumstance, um, we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we seek forgiveness from the family of the deceased, and we seek forgiveness for the deceased that we are not able to fulfill all the rights that we as their brothers and sisters should be doing. So we seek forgiveness on, on, on uh, our behalf, and we go ahead with the law that has been imposed. But if we have the ability, we communicate with the government, we communicate with the uh, policy makers, we communicate with the uh, burial uh, authorities and try to make sure that all the requirements are fulfilled um, even here in Australia and elsewhere.